Hey guys, Pro here at VIP Outdoors, and we have Mr. Brent Souls with Souls Sport Fishing uh, Guide Service. So Brent's been on our pro staff for, I don't know, four years. four years or so, four or five years. And you guys have seen, we did a kokanee video with Brent out there in Southwest Washington. And I'll tell you what, even though he's old, he's the old guy in the crew. <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's a lot of fun, man. We had so much fun on that trip and me personally not being a kokanee guy a kokanee expert i you know I, can i go catch a kokanee maybe um uh, am i an expert i won't consider myself an expert but we got guys on the pro staff that i do consider experts and brent is definitely one of those guys and we want to talk to you just a little bit about rigging introduce some of the products we have at vip outdoors along with other manufacturers uh, that really are just good manufacturers, good people. Uh, and, uh, and let's just go through a little bit of walkthrough, man. Nice and clean and quick and and talk to people that are just getting into the kokanee game. What to, what can they do? What can they expect? Um, what would be a basic setup for somebody just getting into kokanee that maybe doesn't have downriggers? All right. This is a Northwest Rods. Okay. Uh, pretty two to eight pound. Great rod, eight foot, one piece. It's a blend rod, fiberglass, graphite, um, good action. Uh, we're dealing with uh, fish, you know, up to 16, 17 inches, 12 to 16 inches mm -hmm. on the average. So you get you get some fight out of them. It's yeah. just not a, a wiggle every once in a while and a thump. Uh, and get... not to get too technical about rods and things like that, but I've noticed with kokanee, you know, they're such a soft mouth little bugger right. that when you take the rod you got to take the rod in consideration you got to take the line into consideration and use mono uh, right. so we have as much stretch and give as possible so you're not ripping hooks out of their mouth That's you know right. it's not like salmon fishing where you're trolling you lace one up deep into the jawbone and it's a done deal yours, yeah. uh, this one you rip their mouths out and it, and it kills them mm -hmm. too right and yeah. that and that's not what what we want to do so uh good little little setup there We'll put the info as far as the rods and the reels and stuff like right. that down in the description. Okay. So then we start here with the, here's the end of the main line. I like running a bead. Hold on. What pound test line? This is eight pound. Eight pound mono. Yep. Ultra green. Yeah. Um, really like Maxima. Uh, here's the new line lock. Okay. As you can see, it's a lot smaller. It's going to be... Um, more in line with kokanee sized gear rods and uh etc so um, let me talk about that line lock a little bit so the purpose of the line lock for those of you who that might be even new to the line lock is the idea is is that it slides up and down your main line the clip on the bottom is designed to carry your weight and then in the back there's actually a groove i'm gonna put it nice and close to the camera to see if you can see it i don't know if you can or can uh can't or can you know but you see it there, there you go but anyways what this backside groove does that backside allows for this swivel to insert into that line lock and therefore when that weight is stationary and holding tight like this all the spin that takes place from all the gear and tackle down there is absorbed into that swivel and this line lock prohibits that line twist going up your main line which we don't want twist in our main line at no, any time no, right bad no. bad bad okay so then from that swivel we have a bumper i prefer about that's a long one yeah i i, I like a longer here i okay. think freeze this up just a little bit okay um, I, I have seen guys run them, you know, a, a foot long or whatever. Mm -hmm. I like three three to four foot. Three to four foot, okay. Yep. Then I snap swivel onto this, or uh, do a lock onto the swivel. Okay. Onto the Dodger, pull, pull some Cascade. Um, and Pulse and Cascade is actually just right up here in Clackamas, Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, so they develop a lot of the, they have a great line of select or great selection of kokanee products. Yep. Uh, I think they're, when I think about leaders in the industry, when he, you talk about these kokanee dodgers, things like that, they really are very innovative. And, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to innovation of products, um, I take that very seriously uh, as a manufacturer. And they just do a really great job. Uh, it, with their Dodgers. I feel these are the best Dodgers yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, 
probably a good argument they're not from others, but it's okay. It, to you, know, course, own, you know yeah, what I mean? That's what the, makes the world go around. Now. You know, I'll tell you, I'm not sponsored by anybody but me. Um, I, we, I don't accept sponsorships uh, because I want to talk to you guys about the tackle that I really feel is what I consider to be some of the best on the market. And a lot of that I get recommendation from guys on my pro staff. We all fish what we like at the end of the day. And what people say into the camera sometimes is different than what what they actually fish. Uh, with our pro staff, I don't require them to use or talk about our stuff any more than they do the stuff that they actually use because that's that that's what it's about that's that's the truth that's fairness um and when you got a good product outside of ours we're going to talk about it well at the end of the day we got to put fish in the box we got to put fish in the box yeah you know exactly and uh it's like i really like these blades mm -hmm. i don't know who manufactures them but that's ours. i you know I, I paid them to say I, that. I found this in the parking lot up there at the <laughs> lake one day and it's been pretty good for me but. so that's our 1.5 colorado yep. uh 1.5 colorado blade uh that's it's it's we designed it for kokanee fishing but we use it for a wide variety of different things putting in front of of anchovies in front of herring different things like that but for this uh, application in particular we're talking about kokanee fishing so you just use a plastic clevis a metal clevis this is a plastic stirrup clevis right now mm -hmm. um and that you could run down to Fisherman's and buy, or I think there's a few other places you could probably run in Bob's, uh, different places have them. And then you got some beads on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. With the beads, this is a question I've always had is beads in relationship to blade. How many beads do you put on there? Well, I like the last bead about the bottom of the, of, of the, the spinner blade, of the, of the blade. Okay. With, puts it close to the eye of the hook okay and yeah. then like you say i like about that much of a spacing but uh mm -hmm. depends on the side of the bead size yeah. of the beads how many yeah. you're gonna put on there i like these stack beads okay because they're, they're quick and easy absolutely so mm -hmm. really so we have like i hear at vip outdoors we have four millimeter beads we have them in red chartreuse glow white pink mm -hmm. orange a lot of different colors we do some pre-tied leaders i noticed the hooks you're using are a kind of a uh, candy pink finish on those. Okay. Those are not our hooks. These are these are pre-tied that we have online. But what are those? These are Angler Innovation. Okay. They're Murado, mm -hmm. and they're a pink UV. They're coated with a UV. I like them. They look um, nice. And these, I can catch 30, 40, 50 kokanee on these, and these things are just still needles sticky. still. Yeah. Gotcha. They're just, they're incredible hooks. Right. Um, that's a size four. I like, okay. I like fours. So four, or two, excuse me, size twos. Okay, I'm saying the, that looks a little bigger yeah, than our four. The, the fours, for me, I think I get too many of the small fish, the fish of the year. Okay. You know, and so. So it kind of helps weed some of those out. I, I think it does. Okay. You know, yeah. There's days that you're going to stick them all. Yeah, yeah. But. Yeah. Well, that, that's good because I mean at the end of the day we want those kokanee to gain some size right yeah. and if you're using such small hooks that you're threading each one of them you know kokanee is not something that you could generally receive release safely it's a done deal well in Washington fishing bait we have to keep it regardless of the size there you go so I mean I got people uh, we're working men we we know what a guy charges uh, at the end of the day we want to give them the best product and the, and, and the nicest fish we can mm -hmm. I mean I'd rather I'd rather give them 10, you know, 12 to 15 inch fish than two like that and eight little ones. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. So, um, so and then as far as baits, I mean, it kind of seems like there's a couple different things you could use maggots. The biggest issue is shoe peg corn. Right. Shoe peg corn. And I think what separates uh, really, not what separates, what can make the difference one day to the next is the bait sauce you're putting on there. And there's a lot of bait sauces on the market. Uh, we've teamed up with the guys over at Pro Procure and they've made us our original Coke Killer bait set, which actually is a formula uh, from another one of the guys on our pro staff, Brian Jones of Team Takedown Guide Service, who sneakily um, fishes kokanee on the side and is a kokanee murderer. And, uh, but anyway, so we, use that for his recipe to make that formula and it it's been really really a good formula for us mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day and been a good formula for a lot of people and then brent calls me and goes hey let's do this to it in addition so we have two different products and because you do see a difference and that that's what triggered us to make our coke killer plus and 
So this Coat Killer Pro-Loss at the end of the day comes from Brent. This Coat Killer comes from Brian Jones. And um, and there's I'm days that you see... No, that one's better? Yeah. I'll make, sure. yeah. I'll make sure Jones sees yeah. this video. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but there's days that one is going to outperform the other. Absolutely. And, and I've seen it where sometimes on the half day, one outperforms the other, you know? so Hour to hour. Yeah, hour to hour, right? So we have them in both the four two ounce bottles. We'll put a link down to the website for you guys there. Um, but really, as far as a basic one on one getting started on kokanee fishing, that's how we set it up there. I'll make sure we drop a link on that video. I think I know how to do that. I think I screwed it up last time. If one of you kids know how to put a link in something in another video, let me know because I need some help. Um, but we'll get that information to you some way or another. Uh, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe, like, or follow button, and uh, we'll keep the information coming to you guys. So uh, you guys are interested in some trips, Kokanee trips, Southwest Washington, there, give Mr. Soltz a call. You guys will have a great time, especially with those kiddos. That is such a fun fishery for parents and kids. It's lots it's, of action it just yeah, yeah and beyond action they're just not the stress it's just fun mm -hmm. good old-fashioned good old boy fun right? plus good table fare great table fare yeah, yeah. fantastic best yeah. smoked fish i think there is. they're great good old grease balls they are yeah. yeah so awesome guys well thanks for watching again you got any questions drop them down below and and we'll get to them when we get to them so thanks for watching thanks guys